Admiral's Log. As the pages of history continue to turn, we find ourselves deep within the throes of 1942, a year heavy with the weight of the ongoing conflict. This is a time where the fires of war burn brightly against the backdrop of our unyielding resolve. The battles we wage may bear the name of France, Italy and China, but the principles that guide us remain steadfast. A commitment to justice, the preservation of freedom, and the pursuit of a world where harmony reigns. Amidst this theater of uncertainty, a calculated display of power unfolds against the backdrop of the French Antilles. It is a strategic gambit, a show of force designed to exert pressure on our adversaries. Yet, as the curtain rises on this carefully choreographed act, there exists a palpable tension in the air. For every action, as we know, has its equal and opposite reaction. The ripples that we set in motion will inevitably summon a response from the French. An intricate dance of diplomacy and countermove. In these times of ambiguity, I stand at the helm, a steady hand navigating the currents of this complex conflict. Our purpose remains clear, and with each step forward, we inch closer to a future where the turmoil of war may finally have given way to the tranquil embrace of peace. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to episode 12. The US is kind of working on taking over a little bit of terrain from the French. The French, well, they don't exactly approve. The thing is, um, they have a fairly small fleet that they're sending my way. It's the Fulminant, Leon Gambetta, and a couple of lighter stuff. Biggest gun they got is an 8.1 inch. Biggest gun I have is a 16 inch based on the Odyssey of the Galaxy class. So, this is, should be a bit of a slaughter, and hopefully it's going to put the French in their place, teaching them that it is best to not fight the American Navy. At least, not in these conditions. I don't... Good lord. I don't mind them fighting. Um, I just wouldn't recommend that they take me on without any proper battleship support. Um, so, this is your CL. With a couple of 5.3s. That is fairly small for a CL. But again, Admiral Snackbar has been kind enough to update his mod. So the gun resizer and the balance mod works again. That's kind of what I was working for to record more episodes. I got a little stuck there. Um, We have the heavy cruiser here. And yeah, maybe... No. They're definitely getting a lot of attention. Odyssey... Opening up with a mere one and a half percent chance to hit, though. Sea states are pretty good. It's morning, so accuracy is nice. I don't exactly get how smooth waves give you minus ten percent accuracy. I don't believe that this ship is any worse or better in different waves. But okay, I guess that's the sea state that we find ourselves in. So, one or two good hits ought to do it. These guys carry torpedo launchers and midships. Could be dangerous if given enough opportunity to actually launch. Are these the blistling or blistering the quick ships? Is that why they're so hard to hit? That might be it. Bingo. 1634 from a 13 inch with probably high explosive aft partial pen. Ship is on fire, but otherwise not too badly <laughs> damaged. <laughs> I say that. And immediately the ship takes um, a massive hit to its main armament and loses the A turret. It could be worse. The A turret could have decided to just jump ship. It didn't, so I think the French would then have been a heck of a lot worse off. Checking to Peter range. We got torps out to, well, me, essentially. So I have to be a little careful. And it might be prudent to start changing direction. Because I'm very much uninterested. Very, very uninterested in taking any kind of a torpedo hit to these battleships. I need every single ton in order to make those naval invasions work. The more that my ships are going to have to go back to port for repairs and such the worse the situation is going to get. Now, this is one of their DDs. 
It likely also is going to be able to pump out torpedoes. Although, they're not even aimed in my direction. Which leads me to believe they're not that dangerous. What's your range? 12-3. Oh, sorry, 14,000 damage. Another 14,000 damage. That was the cruiser, and the cruiser's gone. This is just entirely unfair. Especially as we destroy their torpedo launchers. This thing is capable of turning on a dime. That's interesting. Yeah, that's... That's the end of that. That's the end of that cruiser. So that's their heavy cruiser's gone. Doesn't mean the damage is completely negated. Because those ships could have dropped torpedoes. Boom. 9.5k. And, and that was a 15-incher. I kind of want to make a 20-inch like single ship or single turret sniper. Just to see what that can do. And we have the budget. We have the capability to build those. So why not? It's going to be a really odd battleship. But like a 20 inch. Or maybe 20.9 inch. Super sniper. Yeah. Jesus. Who got hit? Franklin? Franklin took a lot of damage there. Wait a second. Yeah, it was the light cruiser that hit the Franklin with the Torp for 10,000 damage. Holy shit. That's with a triple bottom. Anti-Torp 2. What sort of nuclear weapons do you have on your cruisers? Because that is some serious firepower. 21 inch? Oh, sorry, that's the... This is the one I should be looking at. 20 inch? Come again, a 20-inch torpedo did that much damage? Yeah. No, well, actually... At the time, the ship wasn't identified. It wasn't identified. It could have been a CA. In case... Yeah, it could be a 22-inch torp. With a maximum damage potential of 33,000. Welcome to the adjusted damage numbers from the balance mod. And again, I'm also benefiting from that. Considering the... Oh, 85k? Somebody did 40,000 damage against that one destroyer. Damn. Um, unfortunately, I cannot really rewind that anymore. Not like you're going to get a log that says, Hey, this ship did this, this ship did that. And not a tally, that's what you get. But an overview of the battle as it progresses. Like this ship did this much damage, that ship did that much damage. So, um, a battleship. A 20.9 inch super sniper. Let's see what I can do. <clears throat> oh, we also got an ambush, but I'll deal with that later. Um, my maximum tonnage... Considering the Enterprise... Sorry, the Sovereign class. Sovereign... Oh, I need to upgrade the Sovereign, by the way. Um, the Sovereign is about 80,000 tons. So if I can make it like 75,000 tons, that should be fine. 75,000 tons gives me a lot of room to work with. And it's going to be capable of providing a very stable firing platform. Um, I can get a 20-inch gun. This is, however, the super battleship hull. It's going to go to 88,000. It's too big. I don't want to go bigger than my uh, capital ship, than my flagship. That's the, re the the rule that I'd set for myself. Can I put it on a battle cruiser, though? I cannot. That's unfortunate. Um, I guess then we're going to have to go with a modern battleship. This would also mean that they're not going to be that big. The real challenge is making it work with the American Towers. Because the American Towers are interesting. Alright, so this is going to give me 62 long-range accuracy. If I go to a different hull... It's going to be 61 long-range accuracy. Okay, so this modern battleship is better. The modern hull tower... Sorry, modern tower 4. And then this is going to give me another 12... Yeah. 
the real deal is doing it this way gives me like what one turret bow one turret stern unless we're gonna go big on the barbettes oh shit hold on this hull can't even support these turrets okay um right can you support these turrets? And do you have any decent hulls? 61. Come on, I want a decent hull. Hmm. Doesn't matter, they all use the same tower, except for Modern Battleship 1. Okay, so you can support the 20 inch, right? No, you cannot. Modern Battleship 3... Can. Okay. Just make it a bit smaller. 75,000 tons will do. I want to supersize it. And then I'm going to drop the displacement again. No. Somewhere around 75,000 tons would do. Yeah, there we go. Okay, modern tower. Jeez, that thing is enormous. Okay. All right, 20 inch. One. This is going to look so weird. And this isn't even my final form. 20.9 inch guns with all the barrel. Giving these guys a reload of about 129 seconds. Holy shit. Uh, what? I got 62 kilometer range? Right. Let's start buffing these things as best I can. Uh, of course, the ship's going to have all sorts of bonuses and availabilities. Let's give him diesel 2s, oil 3, aux 4, shaft 2, better rudder. Uh, actually, no, balanced, not unbalanced. So this is going to give me better turning. No, this is going to give me better turning, but less flash fire chance on this one. I think. Plus one and a half percent hull weight. Plus five percent hull weight. Oh, your turrets reverse is slower with this. Right. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll take the modern armor one. These things are probably going to run very, very, very expensive. So be it. Citadel five, anti floods, reinforced bulkhead. Uh, check. Generation 3 radar, stereoscopic rangefinder 5. Mm, I don't care about sonar, really. This is going to help potentially with the gun aiming speed. But I still have a few things that I would like to add, like a funnel. And on top of that, I still need to add torpedo launchers because that's mandated by the Admiralty. I always have to have uh, those things on here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's not valid. Okay, now I can add torpedo launchers. Add those there. Those are going to be 24-inch uh, elect oxygens. You'll probably see them coming from a very, very serious distance away, but... You know, I kind of doubt that the torpedoes are going to get there anyway. Because if this thing works as intended... And the reload, by the way, now is good. Like, it's 87 seconds. And after 87 seconds, it has... Wow, it has a 1,213 meter per second muzzle velocity. Still, that means that those shells can be traveling for about 30 to 40 seconds before they actually get anywhere. Okay, um... What are we going to be shooting out of these, or rather with these shells? Um, short range, semi-ballistics, not really going to be an issue. Hold on. That's semi-ballistic? And I can pen, let's say, 40,000 meters away, I can pen 17 inches of armor? What the hell? I can also do 36,000 points of damage with HE, but that's generally not even true. Um, if I go for a soft cap ballistic, or 
count ballistic. Fifteen thousand meter range. This thing can pin fifty-four inches of armor with high explosive. What the hell? I think we're gonna go max high explosive on this guy. Because this is so incredibly deadly. Pretty much at any range. And, oh, by the way, at about 30,000 meter range, I think I should be looking at deck. But panning 14 inches of deck armor with high explosive. That's a lot. Oh, sorry, 16 inches. 16 inches of deck, deck pen at 30,000 meter range. Good lord. Now, these things won't turn very quickly. It's not 1.92 degrees per second. So, in order to swing them all the way around, you're going to be waiting 90 seconds or one and a half minutes. Which lines up with the reload pretty well. Alright, as for the rest of this ship. Um, let's give them some secondary guns. What's the biggest you can fit? <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be funny. It's a game, remember? Um, yeah, make those bigger, please. There's longer barrels. Oh, really? Party pooper. Turn it. There. You'll fit. Okay, so these guys... <laughs> these 7.9s can actually shoot farther than some cruisers with their primary armament. These can shoot out to 22 kilometers... I rather doubt they'll hit something that range, but they're willing to try. Um, and they can also pen a really healthy amount of armor. I'm thinking for these, I'm going to add a cap ballistics. Because at, let's say, 15,000 meter range, I can pen 7 inches of armor, which will melt cruisers pretty quick. This is going to be such, such an interesting design. Oh... Plus 20% HE damage. Sign me up. AP range. Almost 70 kilometers. <laughs> so, considering that we always tend to spawn at about 30 kilometer range, 30, 35, this thing is going to have a pretty impressive amount of accuracy. And it can hit you everywhere. There's nowhere that's going to be safe from this thing. Um, she's a little stern heavy. She's also pitching up and down a lot. I don't think that balancing this thing is going to be very easy, if at all feasible. Considering just how heavy the whole thing is. Mm, maybe put a few four inches. Oh, let me guess. It has to be three inches. Three inches. Two inches. These are all going to be single barrel. Because that's kind of the theme of this ship. And naturally, they're going to have a lot of barrel length. The real question is, can I actually supersize these? Because I think... Yeah, some parts don't like that. Can I go to like 0.5? No. Okay, fine. Can I do it with the 3 inch guns? If the ship being overweight is the only problem I have, then I think I came away pretty easy. Uh, yeah. What's the speed on this thing, anyway? 20, 30 knots? Okay. I'll take 30 knots. Nevada. No, we're going to stick in the Star Trek tradition, so this is going to be the Titan class. These things are going to set me back 755 million. Is that a lot? Uh, you can get more than two Sentinels for that. Uh, when it comes to the North Carolinas, you can get yeah, about two and a half Carolinas. 
you can get about one and a half galaxy class. But nothing is going to be as fun as this thing. Fortunately, they're pretty quick to build. 26 months, add some time for commissioning. I wouldn't be surprised if we could get these things out in the water in 30 months. So that means we might actually see these guys before too long. Which I think is really interesting. Uh, when it comes to armor on these guys, let's give them some... I'm, I'm so used to adding belt armor, but in this case, I don't think that the belt is going to be the biggest deal for this ship. I think it might be the deck. I think it might be the deck. Can we add a bit more to the bow deck? Take some off the stern. Yep. Okay, Titan class. Battleship, single barrel 20 inch guns, super sniper. Range, 69.3 kilometers. Rate of fire, one shell every one minute and 40 seconds. Muzzle velocity, 1200 meters per second, 1308 meters per second for HE. Good lord. Um, penetration at 30,000 meter range is 32 inches with HE or 68 inches with AP. This thing is going to have unmatched firepower. Maybe not in the, numero, the, the number of guns. The sheer amount of damage that these guns will do is going to be off the scale. And I'm all for it. So, save. See if I didn't accidentally forget anything. Single hole bottom. Yeah. You know, it's going to be... It's going to be a little bit of a glass cannon. That's my only concern. But I don't want to have a single hole bottom. Whatever. Let's go with Barbette 4. Try not to get yourself blown up. It'll be a really expensive piece of fireworks. But then again, that's something the Americans are pretty good at. Time for another battle. This is the ambush that I just showed you. We are in the Yellow Sea, and I'm not actually sure who is doing the ambushing. It says we did with our destroyers. It's just that two destroyer, or sorry, uh, one to six destroyers against two light cruisers, and not necessarily a done deal. These guys are carrying a fairly well. If you look at their six point threes, you might argue, oh, that is that it. But they also have 18 5.4s. So I think my best strategy with these uh, heavy destroyers... No, actually they're all standard destroyers. They're Morris class. Is to keep it range. I don't think torpedoing these is going to work. So we'll have to outshoot them. But if these stats are accurate, they have a lot of 5.3s. A lot. Oh, and we're in the fog... Oh god, it's worse than a fog. It's a storm. Rough light breeze. Ha! <laughs> light breeze. Stormy weather. Accuracy minus 40%. Rough waves. Accuracy minus 58% or minus 55%. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. We're going to be fighting pretty much blind, cu blind, uh, blind cuffed? Handcuffed in the dark. Uh, yeah. Line ahead, please. And even with radar? Supposedly there's 16 clicks out. Okay. Now, because of the storm, we can also not really make a whole lot of speed. I can shoot out to 11.4. I doubt I'll hit something in this weather. Would you stop trying to make new destroyers, please? We do that in the shipyard. Not here. Oh. We're getting intermittent contacts. They see me every now and then. Somehow my... What's the William D. H. Stanley... Oh, sorry, William H. Stanley shooting at? It's like the game just decides to throw a few salvos at random after it lost radar or after it lost uh, visual contact. There. We got contact. And they keep shooting. So you can shoot at unidentifieds. You can shoot at things you cannot see. It's a neat trick. 
Now, this storm could... Could have a bonus. In the form of, I might be able to torpedo them. What the hell? Look at how these guys are bobbing up and down. <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> I was gonna go. Yeah, no, that's a bit much. Are my destroyers the same? Yeah, they are. Oh, boy. Yeah, this could take a while. Oh! Peter detected. Everybody panic. I mean, dodge. That one's suicided slash dudded. Oh. We have been doing some damage. They hit us once, but it was unsubstantial. Oh, you might want to get out of the way. Jesus. That was fairly close. Okay. Stand down. You know, just send the torp. We might be able to get a hit. Who knows? Better to send these things out than to have them just explode aboard the ship. <laughs> Let's set up a smoke screen. Because, you know, why not? <laughs> it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference at this point. I do like all the, the wave effects, though. It looks great. I would not want to be on board one of these things. Well, and I kind of would. Just to ha experience it. Destroyed a secondary gun. Wait, you destroyed a 5-inch? Really? What's the range on those five inches? I suspect I won't like the answer very much. 5.4 is 11.7. Yeah. Here are the torpedoes. They do know about it. But they tend to turn. Yeah, they tend to turn starboard in order to dodge them. Oh, yeah, you're fine. But there's more. There's more. Those things ain't stopping. Go on. 16k. I wonder if we can actually hit this guy. Considering how much he's coming out of the water every single time. Oh yeah. Definitely hit that. That is one unhappy cruiser. Probably flooding from stem to stern at this point. What is that? What is that? That's some weird effect. Do you have that too? Yeah, I have it too. What is that? Is that because I'm using a mod? The first time I've ever seen that in this game. Okay, so you're gone. Yeah. It's like it doesn't have a visual for the weapon. For the 2 inch. Wait, come again. A 2 inch 75? That's an insane length for a 2 inch gun. Maybe that's why the game doesn't actually show it. It does look like the starboard... Sorry, port gun is oriented this way because... That weird visual is looking the other way, but still. At any rate, um, my destroyers have pulled it off. Despite pretty adverse effects of the weather. It looks like we'll be able to take care of the Bangbu and Anking. Lots of secondaries getting destroyed. The whole thing's on fire and gone. I think most of the damage that we took was from seasick sailors. 
I guess everybody's now going to be on duty of uh, cleaning up the mess. Now, that'll be it for this episode. Um, I do have a bit of a balance issue. I'm like minus 400 million. I hope to be able to finish this or fix this situation. Probably doesn't help that I have 25 capital ships and a fleet of 81 ships in total. Um, it has been known to bob up and down a lot, though, that monthly balance. So we'll just have to wait and see how this is going to end up. As for the naval invasion, um, so far, 28% chance to succeed. I don't think we'll be getting away with this. But at least, we'll be drawing in the French, which is going to lead to more fun. So join me next time. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you soon for more.